Yeah, so right now, uh, for patients with HER2 positive advanced breast cancer, uh, there really is no standard of care once patients' cancers have progressed on drugs like trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and TDM1. Uh, so uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan, which is a new HER2-directed antibody drug conjugate, was designed basically to uh, try to improve upon the current standard of care for these patients who progressed on uh, the previous agents. Uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan is uh, an antibody drug conjugate. Um, uh, it differs, though, in some ways from the current generation of, of ADCs. So one thing that's different is that the payload of, of trastuzumab deruxtecan is a type of chemotherapy called a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor. Uh, this is a type of chemotherapy that's not typically used in HER2-positive breast cancer, so it's less likely that cancers are going to be resistant to this because they haven't seen this type of chemotherapy before. Also, the uh, payload, there's about eight of them uh, on each antibody. So this drug to antibody ratio of about eight is substantially higher than what's currently been used in, in antibody drug conjugates. And lastly, the payload is membrane permeable, which means in preclinical studies, it's able to diffuse out of the targeted cell uh, and uh, hopefully kill uh, neighboring, cell, neighboring cancer cells regardless of their HER2 expression. In a previous phase one study of trastuzumab deruxtecan in patients who had HER2 positive advanced breast cancer, uh, it was designed, uh, that study uh, demonstrated a response rate of about 59%. Uh, um, and so this phase two study was designed not only to try to confirm that the outcomes of patients treated with trastuzumab deruxtecan, but also just make sure we're using the right dose. So in this new study, Patients with uh, HER2 positive advanced uh, breast cancer, um, all of whom had had TDM1, which was one of the standard uh, of care uh, treatments, um, were uh, initially randomized to one of several doses of trastuzumab deruxtecan to try to figure out what is uh, the recommended phase two dose. So based on the efficacy and safety data from that early part of the trial, 5.4 milligrams per kilogram was established as the recommended phase two dose. At that point in the trial, an additional 130 patients uh, were then all treated at that dose of 5.4 milligrams per kilogram. There was an additional small cohort uh, of four patients who were intolerant of TDM1. So overall, the primary objective of the study uh, was to uh, analyze all 184 patients treated at this um, dose of 5.4 milligrams per kilogram, and the endpoint was um, confirmed objective response by an independent radiology review committee. Uh, so in terms of efficacy, we found that in terms of this primary endpoint of objective response by independent review, uh, the response rate was 60.9 percent. Six percent of those were complete responses. 54.9% uh, were partial responses. Um, the clinical benefit rate at six months was about 76%, uh, and the median duration of response was over 14 months. Uh, the, the, what's called the disease control rate was 97%, so uh, less than 2% of patients actually had progressive disease at the time of first restaging. So there was pretty much uniformity of, of, of at least some type of uh, sensitivity to this agent across uh, this population of 184 patients. Uh, in terms of safety, uh, the most common side effects seen uh, were fatigue, nausea, uh, and vomiting, but these were almost all low grade, and that's very similar to what was seen in the phase uh, one study of this agent. Um, but there is one uh, important uh, toxicity that was seen not only in the phase one trial, but in this phase two trial as well, and that's this, uh, something called interstitial lung disease, also commonly known as pneumonitis. And because we knew that this was seen in the prior study in this phase two trial, uh, all patients who had had evidence of pulmonary toxicity were adjudicated by an independent expert panel uh, uh, of pulmonary specialists, and they found uh, 25 patients, or 13.6 percent, uh, who had uh, what they felt was drug-related interstitial lung disease. 20 of those 25 cases were mild uh, and, um, and manageable, uh, but four cases, 2.2 percent of patients actually died uh, of drug-related uh, interstitial lung disease. So going forward, based on recommendations from this panel of, of experts, uh, it's recommended that for patients who have, uh, who are on 
being treated with trastuzumab duroxetine, uh, that they be monitored closely for symptoms of ILD, which include uh, dyspnea, cough, and fever, uh, and if ILD is suspected, that the drug be held uh, and that um, we have a low threshold for starting uh, corticosteroids, uh, and also that the patients be evaluated closely uh, with a high-resolution CT scan uh, and uh, a pulmonology consult. We don't know exactly why ILD occurs with this drug. We do know that uh, ILD can be seen with most HER2-directed therapies. We also know that ILD can be seen with this type of chemotherapy that's included as part of the molecule, this topoisomerase 1 inhibitor. So it may be a combination of those things. Uh, you know, again, pneumonitis is a, is a side effect that's seen in many HER2-directed therapies, uh, but it seems to be more common with this drug. But exactly why, in this, why that is in this particular drug, uh, we're not sure. Yeah, so when you're putting the, the data together, uh, you know, we see this very high rate of, of objective response and a very durable uh, uh, amount of disease control with a median progression-free survival of over 16 months. And that's really substantially higher than what we would see historically in other trials of patients who have uh, this very heavily pretreated population. So in this trial, the median number of uh, prior therapies in the metastatic setting was six. So this is a very pretreated population, and the fact that we see this high level of activity uh, is, is very compelling. Um, and so based on these data, uh, we do think that the trastuzumab duroxetine could become a new standard of care uh, for patients uh, who have pretreated uh, advanced HER2-positive breast cancer. Already, there are um, several randomized phase three trials of trastuzumab duroxetin, two trials in patients who have HER2 um, uh, amplified or HER2 positive uh, metastatic breast cancer, uh, one in a similar population to this study in patients who've already had TDM1, and then another trial in patients who haven't had TDM1 in which uh, trastuzumab duroxetin is going to be compared to TDM1. There's a third trial uh, in patients who have what we call HER2 low cancer. So those are patients whose HER2 expression by immunohistochemistry is either 1 plus or 2 plus, but they're not amplified by FISH. Uh, this is a patient population right now that, that's considered HER2 negative uh, because current generation of HER2-directed therapies don't have any efficacy in that population. So I think it'd be very interesting uh, and very good for patients if this trial shows that trastuzumab duroxetine actually is effective uh, in this HER2 low population because it would basically open up a whole new subtype of breast cancer with uh, an availability of a targeted therapy.